This speaker box has a hole in it. Why in the heck would you want to put a hole in a speaker enclosure? Well, that hole is what is known as a port. Some people call it a vent. Some people call this a base reflex tube. And what it actually is, is a thing called a Helmholtz resonator. The key thing to notice is that it's not really a hole. It's actually a tube and it can be any shape. It can have a square opening, a rectangular opening, a round opening, even a triangle shape. When we add one of these tubes to a speaker enclosure, it also goes by several different names. It might be called a port enclosure or a vented enclosure or a base reflex enclosure. Some people call it a fourth order enclosure. This style of speaker has actually been around for a very long time. It was first patented by a researcher at Bell Labs way back in the 1930s. Now there are several misconceptions about how these things work. A lot of people think that what it does is it takes the energy and the sound coming off of the back of the speaker inside of the enclosure and lets that sound out of the speaker box. Now that actually doesn't make any sense. A speaker makes sound by the cone moving and that cone movement then pushes against the air around it, creates a wave and that's what you hear. It's a sound wave. Well, the back of the cone is moving in the opposite direction. It's what you call out of phase. So if a subwoofer port was just letting the out of phase sound come out of the subwoofer box, that sound would also be out of phase and it would cancel out. What's actually going on is something a lot more complicated. And the key to understanding what's actually going on is to remember that air has mass. We don't think of air as having mass because it's all around us. We're surrounded in it constantly. So we just kind of move through it and we become acclimated to it. So we don't think about all the mass that's weighing down on us from the giant column of air that's between here and outer space. If you took science classes back in school, you probably remember the periodic chart of the elements and even the gases on that chart do have mass. So they do in fact have some amount of weight. At sea level, we're gonna be feeling about 14.7 pounds per square inch of air resting on top of us. It's easy to look at this and think, hey, that's a hollow tube. There's nothing inside it. Not true. It's just filled with something that's very lightweight, like a piece of paper. It doesn't weigh very much, but it does weigh something. And as the speaker inside of the enclosure pumps back and forth, it's gonna pressurize and depressurize the air inside of that enclosure. And as the air inside of the enclosure pressurizes and depressurizes, it's gonna cause the air inside of the port to resonate. Don't think of it as a fan that's pushing air out of the box and in the box. Think of it instead as three different chambers of air that are coupled together. The chamber inside the enclosure, the tube itself holding a chamber of air, and the air outside of the enclosure. So while the air inside of the enclosure is decompressing and compressing, the air inside of the tube is gonna to begin to vibrate or resonate. So what you've actually got is a vibrating mass that's coming into contact with the air outside of the enclosure in order to create sound waves. And that's the thing to remember. The cone on this speaker and the air inside of this port are both vibrating masses that create sound waves. Think of this not as a tube, but as a bonus cone that's made out of air. Sound is just waves propagating through the air. And both the port and the cone don't do anything but vibrate and send these waves propagating through the air. These waves hit your eardrum and that's what you hear. We quantify these waves by measuring their wavelength in cycles per second. We call that hertz. Lower frequencies are what we refer to as bass and our subwoofer typically takes things from about 120 hertz down to around 20 hertz. 20 hertz is the lowest that most human beings can hear. If you're doing this for a home theater setup, you might want something below 20 hertz. We call that infrasonic. Some people call that subsonic, but that's actually the wrong name. Infrasonic is the correct name for that. Now, if you were to fire up your computer and go to something like WinISD, you can go into this menu when modeling a subwoofer and WinISD will show you the gain or the volume or the sound that you're getting out of the port itself. And what you can see happens is that at higher frequencies, the port isn't resonating, so it's not making any sound. And as the frequencies drop, the port begins to resonate and the port begins to make some sound. And as the frequency continues to get lower, the port stops resonating and you get less sound out of the port. Every woofer or subwoofer, even tweeters for that matter, will have a specification known as the free air resonance. The free air resonance is the frequency where the mass of the cone is perfectly offset by the suspension of the driver. So a driver in free air, the suspension includes the surround and this piece down in here called the spider. When you take that speaker and you put it inside of an enclosure, things change a little bit. Now the air inside of the enclosure becomes a part of the suspension. That air has to be compressed every time the speaker moves and so that air cushion 
suspension inside the enclosure adds to the suspension of the driver. That seems kind of obvious in a sealed enclosure. If you compress that air, it has no place to go. So obviously that air is part of the suspension, but it's less obvious in a ported enclosure. Even though there's a tube sticking inside of the box that appears to be empty, that air does have mass. That air mass is going to provide some resistance. And so you're still going to get air being compressed and decompressed at high frequencies. A ported enclosure behaves the same way as a sealed enclosure. The air inside of the box is not being compressed enough in order to get the port to resonate. As you gradually lower the frequency from a higher frequency to a lower frequency, you hit this magic point known as FB. That's also known as the tuning frequency. That's the point where the mass of the cone is completely offset by the suspension of the speaker and the air inside the box together. And at that point, the cone will move very little, but a ported enclosure still makes sound at the resonant frequency. Well, why is that? How is that possible? At that frequency, the velocity of the air moving in and out of the port is gonna reach its highest level. So when the cone of the actual driver is doing the least amount of work, that's when the port is doing the most amount of work. You can verify this by just playing some test tones. If you happen to know the tuning frequency of your enclosure, you can just play that tone and you'll notice that the woofer cone itself isn't moving a lot, but if you put your hand over the port, you'll feel a lot of air moving in and out of the port. A common way to demonstrate that is to put some string or paper or something like that over the port opening so that you can see the air moving in and out of the front of the port. This is also a low tech way to find the tuning frequency of your enclosure. Just play test tones until you see the cone stop moving and the string in front of the port start moving a lot. If you were to start at FB and start playing higher frequencies, the air in the port would start moving less and the cone would begin to take over. But if you were to start at FB and start playing even lower frequencies, something very different would happen. At those lower frequencies, the cone's moving enough to overcome the weight of the air inside of the port. And at a low enough frequency, your driver will begin to behave as if it's in free air meaning not in an enclosure at all. At that point, the cone actually does just become a pump that's pushing the back wave out of the front of the port. And when that starts to happen, you're gonna lose a lot of output. That's one reason why we call these fourth order enclosures, because you're gonna drop off at 24 decibels per octave, which is the slope for a fourth order crossover. So what happens in a ported enclosure is that you get nice output that's gonna peak somewhere around the tuning frequency. Then when you start playing below the tuning frequency, your output drops off quite rapidly. But even worse, because now you're playing in free air and you don't have a suspension anymore, which means your woofer is gonna to move too much and it's gonna do what we call unloading. In other words, it's gonna play beyond its X max and you might actually damage the driver itself from over excursion. Keep watching and I'll show you how to prevent that from happening. Now that we know a little bit about ports, we can dispel a myth. This myth popped up on a recent episode of the Sound Advice live stream and podcast that I do with my good friend Nick from Toys DIY Audio. We live stream every Monday night around 7 p.m. Central Time and we alternate channels. So make sure you subscribe to both of us so you don't miss the live stream. Towards the tail end of a recent live stream, someone asked this question, and this is a common thing that I've seen floating around on the internet. They said that they had heard that if the port opening gets too large, that you lose all of the back pressure inside of your enclosure and the subwoofer will act like it's in free air and unload. And that is technically correct. If the port gets too big, you'll basically have an open box. But here's the thing to remember. If you wanna maintain the same tuning frequency as the port opening gets bigger, the port has to get longer. So if you were to design an enclosure with a very large port opening, that port would have to be very long, which means there's gonna be a whole lot of mass inside of that port. And that extra weight of the mass inside of the port should prevent you from losing all the back pressure in the enclosure. So anytime you're above the tuning frequency of that port, you'll always have plenty of back pressure and the enclosure will act like it is a sealed enclosure. And anytime you're below the tuning frequency of the port, there's not enough back pressure. Now there are other problems that pop up. For example, if the port gets too large, you get port resonances. And as the port gets larger, you tend to have slower transient responses. The other thing to remember is that as the port gets longer, you're going to have more trouble finding a way to squeeze that port into the enclosure. To learn all about port tuning, check out this playlist right here. To learn how to keep your subwoofer from unloading at low frequencies, check out this video right over here. Before I go, I want to say thank you to my patrons over on Patreon, but special thanks to $25 patron Dylan. I'm the DIY Audio Guy, and I'll see you on the next adventure.